Hello and welcome back to the Off the Crossbar YouTube channel for this European Championship special where we are reacting to the naming of the England squad. So Gareth Southgate hasn't announced his final 26 players. He has instead announced a 33-man provisional squad before they have to finalise it at the start of June before the tournament starts on the 11th of June. So we're only two weeks just over two weeks away from the start of the tournament. Um, I have no idea why he's named a 33-man squad. And obviously, joining me as always is my co-presenter, Brad. So what are your thoughts on it being 33 instead of the final 26? Like, this is the ultimate stave of just how much this guy is destined to make us fail. Yeah. Like, as soon as I... If we'd done this like last week, the backlash wouldn't have been as bad. He did it not even 24 hours before he prepared to announce the final squad. Yeah, I think even if he announced it like a three, two, three weeks back at the same time as Portugal had theirs, France, Germany and Spain all announced theirs. Well, Spain was more recently. But yeah, I, I agree with you. There wouldn't be as much backlash because you can understand, it, right, I want to watch the final two games of the season um, see how all the players do and give a bit of time for some players that might not be fully fit yet so that would be an understanding but the fact he did it 24 hours is just like why have you changed your mind for and what have you saying he set us up for failure I 100% agree I think it's... I'd like to hope he hasn't set us up for failure I still think there's a very good squad there that should be going very far in the tournament as we will explain yeah but at the same time I just I don't know. There's something about me that says this England team doesn't get past the quarters. Which is probably the minimum aim. Mm. We think oh, about it. But I think that is the I think that will be where we finish in this tournament rather than I still any need further. to like properly look at how the get yeah, how it would work out like in the group stage. I I don't have my custom reward chart yet. No. I think they'll come out within the next week. They should come out, so you I can have a look at that. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Where are they all? <laughs> yes. Um, right, we'll go through it in position by position first, and we'll start off with the goalkeepers. So he has named four goalkeepers, and they are Dean Henderson of Manchester United, Sam Johnston of West Bromwich Albion, Jordan Pickford of Everton, and Aaron Ramsdale of Sheffield United. What are your thoughts on those four? It's obvious that the number one is. Not depressingly. Because... Pickford. He can make the odd mistake, but he can pull off a few very good saves as well. So he's uh, like he's the obvious number one there. Yeah, which is he doesn't fill me with confidence. After watching yeah. him this season for Everton, he doesn't fill me with confidence at all. Well, we only have to look at past stuff to not be fully confident with him. But even if it was yeah. Dick Pope, I think we wouldn't be too there because. So he's not as good with his feet. Mm. I guess that's what we want from our team. But obviously the injury is now coming. He's yeah out of it. Yeah. Henderson's not ready. He hasn't had enough. If he played more games for United this season and was United's first choice instead of De Gea, I think we would have easily been saying Henderson's a number one. Mm. But like you said, he's not ready just yet. And Sam um, Johnston, while good, I don't think he's number one. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's, it's very good for him because yeah, he's gone quite far from when I first saw him play when he was at that season on loan at, at Villa in 2017 18. Like, he was a very good goalkeeper, then we thought we had some games. He's, he's Manchester United the Academy, yeah, the product, so. yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was a very good keeper there, and um, it's one of them like we've had we it's the United have really good young goalkeepers coming through all the time, but it's the fact that we've had like a really great number one. Like, I mean, if you remember, Tom Heaton was at Man United's academy. He did really well since leaving. We've had Ben Foster was a part of United. Um, Thomas Kushak had an all right career after leaving us, but it's just we've had the big keepers. And I think that could also potentially be the problem for Henderson at the minute. And that's why he went out on loan for the last two seasons to Sheffield United. And obviously he's gone out on other loans beforehand. But yeah, um, Sam Johnson's had a really good season in a 
exceptionally poor West Brom team and I think he is the right third choice considering Nick Pope is injured. Yeah, and is Aaron Ramsdale? He's just there because they wanted a fourth choice keeper. Yeah, it, there's no chance really that Ramsdale gets in, barring injuries. Yeah, unless Pickford, Johnston, or any, or Henderson get injured, like you said, he I doesn't get into this squad at Ramsdale all. Ramsdale would seem odd considering Sheffield United's position, and you know he's not had a great season mm. either. Who else was there really? That's the thing. I can't think of many other English keepers. Yeah, this is out there in the, top, in the in 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 the top division. That is. Um, even lower down, like just for the no, bad sacks. Why aren't we calling up Ben Foster? Retired. I don't give a shit. I want GoPros at the Euros. <laughs> uh, that would be brilliant. Um, yeah, I think that's the thing. There's there isn't many English keepers. I mean, maybe Freddie Woodman at Swansea the if they were to get up. A decent shout, yeah. Swansea uh, pressed the season. He's been one of those that have done well. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, out of the Premier League, I can't think of any other English keepers apart from the three that have been named. So to the defenders. Yeah, so the defenders are Trent Alexander-Arnold of Liverpool has been recalled to the England squad. Ben Chilwell of Chelsea. Conor Cody of Wolverhampton Wanderers. Ben Godfrey included him for the first time of Everton, Reese James of Chelsea, Harry Maguire of Manchester United, Tyro Mings of Aston Villa, Luke Shaw of Manchester United, John Stones of Manchester City, Kieran Trippier of Atletico Madrid, Kai Walker of Manchester City, and Ben White of Brighton and Hove Albion. I mean... It's an outrage. Where's Eric Dyer? You're the only person that's ever actually going to say that. Well, obviously, I'm joking. But wow, <laughs> that's unreal. <laughs> yeah, the fact that he's actually been left out is incredible. Scenes there from uh, Southgate, considering he is Southgate's go to man. Scenes recovered. He's back in the good books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, good to see Godfrey and Ben White get a first call ups. Whether they actually play in the England squad is another thing uh, or make the final 23 um, but I think I know where you're going to go with this well, you see, I, can't... Go on. Yeah. I, I can rage all at one it's like oh how has Ben White got in there where is Ezri Constable he wouldn't have put either of them in the 26 yeah so I can't rage heavily on this well I can't rage at all I can't complain uh, maybe Brian will be looking at this going well, Ben Watts, it, but I thought Lewis Dunk was better. Yeah. I think Connor Cody, again, I don't think he's had that good of a season at Wolves. Yeah, still decent. I, still done decent. And he's a leader. You still need leaders around it, I guess. Yeah, but if we're looking at that England squad, I'd say Maguire, Stones, Henderson would be, yeah, and Harry Kane will be your leaders in that squad. You never squad. have enough leaders. I'm not going to go there with what I had in my head, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, not it's, not... Hmm? it's not that kind of it, is it? No, no, no. Um, yeah, I think Council oh, probably could have got in four. Trent, James, Walker and Trippier. Um, I think the starting position would be between Trippier and Kyle Walker, I think, would be the first two choices. Trippier's had an excellent season out in Spain for Atletico Madrid as they went on to win uh, the Liga title. Kai Walker. Would mean that one of Go on. Trent or Reese James gets dropped. I wouldn't Which be just damning to say. You know what? I wouldn't be or, surprised. See, we don't even know what formation we're going to go with. Oh, yeah. Because if well, it is the three at the back, I wouldn't be against Kyle Walker as the first centre back. Yeah. Have it as Stones, Maguire, and Walker. Yeah, and then you've got Trent on the right and obviously Ben Shilwell it would be on the left because I don't think Luke Shaw does as well in the three. Yeah, if it's a standard back four he does, then it's Luke Shaw. You've got to think of all solutions. That he... like, oh, you can't drop Trent. I don't... Defensively, that debate will be had. Mm. But that's why you don't play him in those bigger games. You bring him on as the option when you need something. Oh, 100%. So thinking ahead to England's first game, which is against Croatia, 
uh, he doesn't start for me. Trent I think Alec. we'll have that discussion probably around June first when we do the final squad. Yeah, well, um, yeah, can't complain too much about that defensive size. Um, it'd be interesting to see if Maguire is fit enough because obviously he's missing for Manchester United. Well, he, I'm sure I think he has travelled with the squad to Gdansk for their Europa League final tomorrow, but it's obviously very unlikely that he's going to play a part in it. I think he's just going to go there to like keep getting match fit and obviously be a part of the team should they go on to win the trophy. But hopefully he can make a full recovery in time for that England uh, final squad. Otherwise, like you said, Ben White or Godfrey will actually maintain their place should Maguire have to pull out if he's not fully fit. Yeah, midfielders. Yeah, so the midfielders are Jude Bellingham of Borussia Dortmund, Jordan Henderson of Liverpool, Jesse Lingard of Manchester United slash West Ham United, Mason Mount of Chelsea, Calvin Phillips of Leeds United, Declan Rice of West Ham United, and James Ward-Prowse of Southampton. I felt like saying Southampton United then. <laughs> um, I can't go by about the midfield. Yeah, I actually got no complaints whatsoever about that midfield. Nor do I think much changes out of it. I think they all stay. Maybe. If, they, if, if one of them gets dropped, it's going to be between Bellingham Phillips. or Lingard. No, I think it's between Phillips but if and Phillips Prowse. Calvin Phillips apparently is fine. Mm. So he's not as injured as they thought he was. No, it's either Bellingham or Lingard that's probably dropped. And uh, no, in Southgate, he'd probably drop Bellingham, which I think would be the biggest mistake. Considering how great of a season he has and given him this first tournament experience and look at all even, those... if, even if you don't play him at 17 years old to have this tournament exposure is something that could help him going forward with obviously the world cup uh, next year in qatar and obviously further tournaments in the future yeah i think midfield wise i don't know if we do drop any yeah i would put, personally would have bellingham in and not lingard because i still think you need a number eight I yeah. thought Bellingham pretty much is out of those options. Oh, 100%. The only of one for me out of that is James ward Bros. But for me, he's not a regular starter. Mm. Which is incredible considering over the last two seasons, he's played in every game for Southampton, which is an incredible feat. But, but hey, I want him on the plane because if we get a free kick... Oh, bend it like ward Prowse. <laughs> bend it like JWV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Henderson, obviously, he was back involved in the Liverpool squad on Sunday for their final game, but didn't play in the game, um, as far as I'm aware. But it would be interesting to see, again, if he is fully fit and does make a recovery, because obviously they do play uh, two friendlies over the next couple of weeks, one against Austria next Wednesday, and then, uh, is it Moldova at the weekend? I I've forgotten who the two friendlies are. Italy? Do I care? <laughs> no, they're friendlies. Uh, both taking place at, what do you call it? The Riverside Stadium, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, no complaints really about uh, that midfield. Oh, it's Romania, it's the other game against on Sunday, the 6th of June. Right, and on to the this forward is, line now. Yeah, this will now be divisive. <laughs> yeah. So we've got Dominic Calvert-Lewin of Everton, Phil Foden of Manchester City, Jack Grealish of Aston Villa, Mason Greenwood of Manchester United, Harry Kane of Tottenham Hotspur, for now, Marcus Rashford of Manchester United, Bakaya Saka of Arsenal, Jadon Sancho of Borussia Dortmund, Raheem Sterling of Manchester City, and Ollie Watkins of Aston Villa. Do you want to start your debate first? Because we'll have differing opinions on this. I know we will. I know, we will. <laughs> I know I'll, I've been talking about it a lot over the last few shows, but Patrick Bamford missing out. What, I, I, just, I just don't know how. I'd have how had him does... in this provisional team. Like, absolutely. I would not disagree on that one. Mm. He's not in that final 26 there. I think he would have been in the final 26 had he been selected. I think the likes of Saka and Watkins would drop out if out of the forward line he was to get rid of some. Bamford is very much like just getting the bucks in the right area. Score. 
Whereas Ollie Watkins does so much more than that. You need a hold or play. Yeah, but you don't because Harry Kane's been doing that this season for Tottenham. He said in himself in the interview with Gary Neville uh, last week, he worked on that during the off season that uh, he wanted to drop deep and uh, play in that position where you get the ball and then feed in the attacker or wingers so they can go on and score and do that stuff. So I think Patrick you Bamford play would have worked. If he wants to do that. I think Patrick Bamford would have worked really well in that system. He would have, but he wouldn't have seen enough time anyway. Mm, it's, it's, it's actually so bad for him because he's had an exceptional season. But like yeah. He's the second highest goal scorer in English football behind Harry Kane as a forward and he doesn't get in and I don't know what more he has to do for At least the Leeds fans now know how we felt with Greenish for so long. But oh, no, yeah. his time if he carries on his ball, his time will come. Yeah. It's just this was too soon. <sighs> I don't know. I think it would have been nice to see him get selected. Like you say, I don't know whether he might have made the final twenty six, but I think he would have had good uh, stead to have made it so yeah I can't complain too much about I'm it I'm just glad that I can now stop the anxiety of you know worrying whether he would have actually picked Jack Grealish <laughs> mm. then again he still might kick him <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me with Southgate no, I but yeah I think if we still look I think Saka it's been a bit of a surprise because he's had a it's bit of a slightly lap. tailed off hasn't it yeah, it's been a disappointing end to the season for him at Arsenal. I mean, obviously Arsenal finishing eighth, not getting any European football isn't going to help them. And yeah, I don't know. I think it's. I think this is a tournament too soon for Saka. I mean, he's only nineteen years old. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it doesn't just doesn't fill me with too much. It's weird because he started the season as a left back. And then he suddenly became a forward, and I think that's ended up being the problem for him. Yeah, I mean, he, his last three games, he wasn't involved in any goals. I mean, his last goal at, uh, contribution was against West Brom, where he got an assist. And then before that, his last goal involvement was against Leeds United back in February. So he's had, so, like, over Christmas, oh, and f- so, yeah, from 26th of December to the end of January was his best uh, form this season where he was involved in six goals over that period of time. But after that, got two assists, not even in the squad for the Liverpool game, two games he played on the bench, and it was just a disappointing end to the season for him. But yeah, um, Calvert-Lewin again, I think he had a bit of a decline towards the end of the season as well compared to how well he started this season. Yeah. I think if you're going to put Bamford in, it's not Watkins that needs to be dropped, it's Calvert Lewin. But that's not going to happen because his aerial threat is a lot better than Bamford's. Yeah. Um, Foden, Greenwood, Kane, Rashford, Sancho, and Sterling, I think they were all guaranteed to get on the plane. Greatly should, you can't put the word guaranteed with yeah. Greatly should have <laughs> Kane. <laughs> hmm. So, yeah, it'd be very interesting to see who does make the final 26-man squad. Um, I mean, who are your seven that miss out? And I'll jot them down now to see how close we are to being right come. Uh, I think he has to submit it by the 11pm on the 1st of June. Okay, so Ramsdale's dropped. Yep. Godfrey. Mm-hmm. Ben White. That's free. Uh, Saka. Crap, now we're in actual tough territory. Mm. So three more. It's difficult with Maguire if he's fit or not. Oh yeah. If not fit, Maguire. Yeah. Uh, Trippier. Never gonna happen, but <laughs> well, I prefer Rhys James. And the last one. Lingard. Okay. Um. As I, can I say if Maguire's fit? Then you have to send home Connor Cody. Okay, I'll just put uh, an asterisk there. Next I still the think it's good to have at least three right backs in because I think Walker would be good as right back slash centre back. Mm. 
Okay, so uh, I'm going to agree with you on Ramsdale. He goes. I think everyone knows that. And I think even Ramsdale himself knows he's going to get dropped. I think there's something where the likes of Henderson uh, and the Manchester City Man United players, some of them won't be available for uh, next week's game against Austria due to it, the Champions League and Europa League finals being played within like a week or so. And I don't know whether they'll be playing the other game as well at the, the that following weekend. Um I'm going to go with Ben White as well. Uh, Godfrey, yeah, I have to agree with you there. Uh, Saka, again, I 100% agree with. Uh, so that's four from me. I think I think Watkins misses out. The only thing with that is that can he get a leave too short? Because I've seen a few people think that Watkins will get dropped. Mm, I think it's just, it just too strong because then that's mental. In Kane and Greenwood or Calvert Lewin. Yeah, actually, no. If you get enough Greenwood as a striker, it's, then yeah, I think you'll. I think Greenwood would play more as a striker than out on the wing. Um, so that's one, two, three, four, five. I think. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Lingard as well. And then my last play to get dropped. It's it's going to be one of the right backs. Um, I I think you know what it wouldn't surprise me if Trent goes. That's just grounds for immediate sacking. I know, but uh, obviously being omitted from England squads recently, I th- and there was rumours that he wouldn't get called up to the final twenty six squad, and I think I'm just going on that as to why he won't go. I'm not saying he shouldn't go. No like, knows uh, what's going inside the, the mind of Gareth Southgate. <laughs> well, no, that's true. But yeah, that would be my seven to be dropped from this. What is interesting, though, is it feels like more this year than most years that there's an actual proper debate being had of who goes in. And it's actually a difficult one. Yeah. I don't think there's... It's nice to have actual talent. Whether they perform is going to be uh, something interesting as well but yeah like you said it's good that we have or everyone's having a conversation as to the eventual 26 then even getting down to the start 11 for the first game against Croatia in a few weeks time as well that's going to cause some controversy once he's named the 26 uh, player squad um stay off Twitter that day yeah 100% so it's already pretty bad now if I'm honest oh 100% it's it's gonna, get it, but yeah He's going to be very, very interesting to see what is the final showing from Southgate and how he goes about selecting this squad as well in the future because I would like to say I understand how his mind works, but I have no idea sometimes. I mean, the fact that... uh, Kieran Dyer kept getting not Kieran Dyer, Eric Dyer even. <laughs> Kieran Dyer. <laughs> Kieran Dyer, Jesus. I'd oh, he's not getting on the plane. <laughs> no, <laughs> unlucky Kieran. Um, yeah, Eric Dyer. I think that's a probably the biggest shock to most people, considering how reliable he has been under Southgate. Oh, no, Obviously. he's not. He's not been reliable. Southgate's been reliable to him. Well, yeah. True. That. Well, yeah. Danny Ings, again, I think it's because he's not probably fully fit. I know he's coming back to a bit of fitness at Southampton. But, yeah, I think... He's got slightly injury prone. Yeah, and I think it's good for Southampton in that terms that he misses out. Um, Obviously, we said with Nick Pope, he obviously isn't fully fit. Otherwise, he would be in that squad instead of uh, Ramsdale and Johnston would have been the fourth choice keeper there. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting over the next 14 days or so before uh, we have the final set of uh, fixtures to look out for, or squad to look out for. Um, Yeah, so make sure you like, comment and subscribe. We'll be back later on this week with our grading of each Premier League uh, team this season and our standout player for that team and disappointment as well. And we'll obviously have the 
podcast in its usual place on Thursday or potentially Friday, previewing the Champions League finals, the playoff finals and having a look back at tomorrow's Europa League final. Until then, make sure you like, comment and subscribe, turn on post notifications so you never miss a post and make sure you follow us on Twitter as well. And until then, it's goodbye from Brad. It's goodbye. And goodbye from me. We'll see you soon.